Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Munoth. I'm an orthopedic surgeon um, at Hinduja Hospital. Today, I'll be talking about ligament injuries of the leg. Um, we'll show you some videos initially and have a look at these uh, injuries. This is a video of Robbie William. Yeah, sorry, Robbie Gray. And look at the mechanism of injury. How he is jumping on the so just show you again just hold on yeah so he jumps to take the ball and he lands and see how his right knee hyper extends or goes backwards and is off on the field there's another video of Michael Owen who is a famous uh, English football player he's being carried off the pitch he cannot walk and look at his knee right now after kicking the ball and there you can see it just goes off and not able to stand at all so knee is like a round ball on a flat surface and because it's a ball on a flat surface the key stability provided uh, to the knee joint is by mainly by the ligaments the bony architecture does provide minimal support and it is mainly in full extension or when the knee is completely straight but as soon as the knee is the key structures providing stability are the ligaments there are various acute knee injuries happening but the key injuries which we are interested in, or which this lecture or talk will focus is on anterior cruciate ligament injury and the posterior cruciate ligament injury rest there are other various forms of injuries like the meniscus which is quite common also posterolateral lateral corner injury as well so coming to anterior cruciate ligament why is it so important because it limits the anterior displacement of the tibia on the femur that means it prevents the leg from coming forward also it acts as a secondary restraint in rotation or provide stability in rotation of the knee as well as side to side stability as well what happens during ligament tears the ACL ligament can withstand around 400 pounds of force but it is a commonest injury particularly in athletes constitutes around 3% of all athletic injuries it's approximately around 30 new cases per thousand patients or population per year have ACL injuries the common sports is usually a football, basketball or ski. When during an injury, if a patient lands inappropriately with twisting of the knee uh, or in cutting or in as you can see in the soccer players where they are suddenly turning sideways, what we call as a cut movement or if there is a hyperextension injury which we saw in one of the videos, the knee lands straight and then goes into hyperextension the ACL is at its maximal length putting at risk increased risk of tearing so how do we diagnose an ACL injury the commonest way to diagnose is by clinical examination the accuracy of clinical examination is very very good the key test is what we call as a Lachman test which is done with the knee in slight flexion or bending of the knee so around 30 degrees or bend of the knee and that is the best examination very sensitive and specific as well the other diagnostic investigation or test is the pivot shift where we try to rotate and reduce the knee from full extension to a slight bit of flexion in chronic tears you can do an anterior draw test where we get the knee 90 degrees of flexion and examine if the leg is coming too far forward on the thigh bone if they are associated injuries that needs to be examined as well because that does um, depends or, or the associated in injuries will dictate how the management of ACL rupture has been done investigations wise we can do we should be doing x-rays of the knee in all patients to rule out any fractures or any avulsion injury of the ACL also in the x-rays if you see a fracture around the lateral part of the leg which is called as a 
second fracture it's almost pathognomic complete diagnosis of an ACL rupture MRI scan be done to confirm the diagnosis and it is very accurate around 95% accuracy so what is the management of ACL injuries like all the other any other treatment there is operative management versus non operative management and the way the clinicians decide depends on the activity level of the patients as well as if they are able to modify their lifestyle and if there are any other associated injuries present also age does play a key part in deciding if the patient may require surgery or not around 30 percent of the patients do quite well without any operation they do well with initially brace and then once the swelling and pain is settled by using ice and compressions these patients can then start with quadriceps and hamstring stretching exercise building up their quadriceps muscle is a key feature of ACL rehabilitation if they are doing any sports using a brace may help if the patient is a high demand patient or they are, they are professional people or if they have failed a conservative management and in very young patients probably these patients are ideal candidates for an operation most of the ACL surgery nowadays have been done through keyhole surgery what we call as an arthroscopy surgery there are various discussions on which, which is the best graph or the tissue used for the ACL reconstruction either a bone patella bone as shown on the left side of the slide or using the hamstring tendons where we double them up if we take two hamstrings and double them up to get four strands both are equally good and studies have shown in the literature that both work extremely well so that's we finish the topic on ACL reconstruction the next topic we come on the posterior cruciate leg reconstruction it's a very big ligament in the knee it is twice the size and strength of ACL ligament 5% of all knee injuries do have a, a PCL component as well and the function of the posterior cruciate ligament it resists the anterior slide of the femur and secondarily it prevents hyperextension now how do we get PCL injuries if there is a direct blow of the knee when the when the either the per person is landing directly on the knee or in a car accident where there is a dashboard injury and the whole leg is pushed backwards then you have a PCL injury in hyperextension there can be anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligament injuries and there may be associated injuries commonly seen as a posterior lateral corner injury with a PCL injury what do patients present with usually they don't present sorry yeah. they don't present with instability but they do present with some pain and if there are any associated in injuries then they will have other symptoms swelling is usually not an issue and in the long term they may have osteoarthritis examination wise the key feature is what we call as a sag sign where if you see the knee at 90 degrees flexion from the side then the leg will be sagging behind the knee cap then a posterior draw test is done and you will there will be what we call as a false positive Lachman test where the tibia comes forward but actually not the ACL is gone it's actually the PCL which is gone and you're bringing the knee in its normal position and the diagram this this diagram shows the cordyceps active test which also helps in confirming the diagnosis the other key feature is to make sure that we do examine for the postulateral corner at the same time management 90% of the times in isolated PCL injury they do quite well with a non-operative management the key is again building up and focusing on quadriceps strengthening exercises most of the rugby players in in Europe have a PCL injury and they do extremely well without any surgery however if they were they are associated injuries like a postulateral corner injury or an ACL or any other collateral ligaments gone then these patients should have operative treatment coming to the next topic in the leg 
is I'm going to cover the ankle injuries, which is again a very common injury. And in the in the talk, I'll be talking about acute lateral ligament injuries. And then if there's a continued pain after the lateral ligament injuries, what is the diagnosis? And what do you do for chronic and recurrent instability of the ankle? In acute lateral ligament injuries, it's usually an inversion type of injury. Patients complain gives a history of twisting of the leg or missing a curb. The complaint of pain and swelling over the lateral aspect of the angle and depending on the degree of injury to the ligament they could be just complaining of minor swelling which settles for five to seven days to a significant bruise and swelling for six weeks and depending on the grades you can decide on the management if it is a grade one injury then ice elevation and rest probably would suffice but if it is a grade three type of injury then they should be braced for at least six weeks and after bracing and the swelling has settled down uh, they should, the ankle or the patient should be advised physiotherapy and proprioceptive exercises in the form of wobble board also once the ankle is stable then they can go back to physiotherapy if there is continued pain after the ankle injuries then some of the differential diagnosis or one of the differential diagnoses could be an osteochondral injury or should be suspected and an x-rays or MRI will help in the diagnosis and if the diagnosis is confirmed then an arthroscopy and debridement would help another differential diagnosis for continuing pain is synovitis and soft tissue impingement as shown in the diagram here the patients complain of sharp pinching pain and giving pain and if these diagnosis are confirmed on MRI scan then an arthroscopy and debridement would definitely help. Chronic ankle instability where patients have recurrent giving way of the ankle or twisting of the ankle then these patients are clinically unstable a draw test done on these patients confirms their instability an MRI scan will help in determining the tissue type or the tissue damage to the anterior talofibular ligament a stress, a stress test as shown here may will also help and treatment initially bracing physiotherapy and functional rehabilitation would help if there is failure of the conservative management then either the repair of the lateral tissue structures by what we call as a brostrum repair would help if the tissue is not very good then a reconstruction with surrounding tendons would be uh, the operative choice. Thank you very much for listening.